I, I joke that I should have a sign over the gate that says book orphanarium because that's, I mean, basically that's my job is I find new homes for books. It's what I do. I opened the shop uh, just over five years ago um, and the, at almost the end of 2009, November 2009. Um, so yeah, five years, I can't even believe it. Um, but books have been part of me for far longer than that. Um, you know, I sold stuff on eBay and book scouted for local book dealers, um, kind of learned the ropes doing it that way. Um, but always at the back of my head was the wondering, you know, would I be able to run my own bookshop? Like, would I like it? Would it be a good thing to do? Um, and there's always that terror of, you know, when, when you're doing online selling, your living space becomes encroached upon by the stuff because there's always leftovers. You know, nothing sells 100% of the time. And so I was always worried that if I encouraged my, my book addiction, <laughs> you know, that craving, um, that I would get myself in trouble. But actually the shop has been really helpful because <laughs> my home library is very nice and trim now because I know I can get almost anything I want again later because I'm good at finding books. People ask me all the time if, um, if the day of the book is over. People aren't reading anymore. Is that the case? Are kids reading? Um, but I can say with full confidence that people are still reading. People still want books. Even people who own Kindles, if they like a book enough, they're gonna come and get the real thing once they read it on the Kindle because it's a different experience. It's paper and ink. It's something you can hold on to, it's something you know you have. Virtual books are great because they don't take up any space, but at the same time, you don't get to see it. You don't get to fill your home with it. It's, it's like little flags of things that you're interested in, things that you love, things that make you happy. And, you know, because you have them on your bookshelves around you all the time, it's, it fills that space with, it's just, a, I don't, I can't think of anything else that does that that same way they're signifiers of points in your history. Like when you read that book, what were you doing? Who were you spending time with? What amazing thing did you realize as you were reading it that might have changed your life and continues to change it? It's each book holds something for you. Um, we're, we're very funny creatures. We, we like things. <laughs> I've become a very firm believer in, um, you know, kind of circulating your library. I have a lot of people who trade books into me or sell me books. And I feel like at least once a year or so, it's really good to just sort of look at what's on your shelves and cull a little bit, circulate the library. It seems a lot more healthy that way because there's always, there's always deadwood. You know, there's always stuff that you know you're not gonna read again or something that you've, your interest in it is past, that time has come and gone, the world has moved on. So then the book can go to a new home and somebody else will love it and read it and have their own experience with it. So that's, that's the great thing about used bookstores is it's a constantly flowing body. It's very organic. It changes all the time. I have customers that have been coming here, you know, pretty much since I opened, who will come in and I'll hear this little exclamation from them over in the stack somewhere. And I'll look to see what's going on and they're like, you have a whole section of blah, blah, blah. I never knew. And so they spend the next two hours digging through, you know, whatever section it is they, that they're very excited about that they didn't know I had. So there's little, there's stuff tucked in every corner. Let's just put it that way. Like if people are like, oh, how many of these have you read? I'm like this much, <laughs> which is totally true because there are way too many books. There are not enough hours in the day, um, even to read the ones that I really, really want to read. So, so I read what I can. And, but I also, I'm always paying attention to what other people are reading, how they're responding to it, how they relate it to other books, because you, you need to be able to sort of jump, make those little jumps. You know, if somebody asks you, if somebody comes up to the counter and is like, I have no idea what to read next. That's like the most challenging thing because it's all guesswork. You kind of have to intuit your way through it. You find out what they've been reading that they liked, what they might be in the mood for now, and sort of try to, out of that, craft some sort of amalgamation, some sort of alchemy 
of well these here these this dozen books might you might find the one in there and it seems to work pretty well you have to kind of be in the right groove and it kind of takes a little bit of warming up sometimes but it's it's a very strange process and you can't you can't really teach it like you have to just sort of learn how to do it and I think most people who haven't been here yet are surprised when they walk through the door because the front of the shop, the facade on Congress Street, doesn't really tell you what's in here. And when you step through that door and you see linear foot after linear foot and up to the ceiling books of all types, yeah. <laughs> most people, the first thing they say, wow, you have a lot of books. I'm like, yes, yes, I do. <laughs> More every day. <laughs> so, you know, so if you haven't been in because you didn't think there was a lot here or there wasn't going to be what you wanted, you should come on in and check it out because I, literally I have a little bit of everything and what I don't have now, I'll probably have a month or two from now because it, it constantly flows and I get new books in all the time.